Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Welcome to my workbench. This is where I generally work. Um, I got a lot of response on my um, sea glass um, bracelet in progress that I was working on on my blog and I had a lot of people say that they uh, wish they knew how to solder. I kind of made it my goal this week to learn how to solder properly because um, I've never really had a lot of luck with it and I have learned quite a bit during this uh, week of practice and I hope that I can help you with your soldering projects. I'm certainly an expert at ruining soldering iron so um, I think I'm gonna first tell you what not to do. How about that? Uh, first of all, you can you have a few choices when you want to solder. This is a soldering gun. Um, this is most useful when you have to do a large project. You really need your gun to recover and stay hot. Um, generally not what you would do like with mixed media or jewelry or anything small like that. This would probably not be very useful. Uh, what I do like about it is that it's got a trigger so that when you're ready for it to be hot, you squeeze the trigger and then it heats up very quickly. It's not on all the time like your pencil style uh, soldering iron. This will probably be the most useful for a mixed media or jewelry artist. Um, of course, if you're doing fine jewelry like silver gold, you will need a, a jeweler's torch. Um, I've never used one of those so I can't um, really comment on those. but. Um, but so we're going to talk about soldering irons today and this is just your regular soldering gun. We're not going to use this so I'm going to set this over out of the way. Okay so now we have our pencil style soldering irons and you can find these at the hardware store for between five and ten dollars. I think I paid five bucks for these and um, this is in really bad shape. It's got chunks out of it, it's severely oxidized um, it's barely useful <laughs> and I am why I'm responsible for this and I'll tell you what happened. Um, well for one thing I kind of have a theory where um, it's my glue gun theory. I plug it in and I leave it on so when I'm ready for it it's good. You really don't want to leave these on when you're not using them. The, the heat is just gonna wear them out sooner. Um, if it's a, an iron that you can replace the tips it's not a big deal but um, for this, I mean, there's chunks that are just falling out of it. It's just really in bad, bad shape. It's all oxidized and um, just a bad situation. So this one's not so bad. I haven't used it as much. You can see that the tip is nice and flat. Um, if I wait, I do have a little, little bit of oxidation, well, quite a bit of oxidation, and there's some chunks kind of taken out of it. Um, but it's not shiny. Much of it is not shiny and the solder's only going to stick to the shiny spot. So if you get yourself in a situation like this with a cheap soldering iron, don't do this with anything expensive, but you have a cheap soldering iron that you can't get the solder to stick to because it's oxidized, which is basically like a very thin layer of kind of rust and it just, the solder won't stick to it. That's why you have a hot iron and you're touching it to the solder and it's not melting. It's just because your iron is oxidized. So what I found is kind of a last ditch effort to revive these old soldering irons is to file them. And I do unplug them first and I file them down until I can see the shiny, um, I guess it's the copper I'm seeing. Um, so you could do that as a last ditch effort. Best thing is to buy an iron and keep it nice. So to keep it nice, the first thing you want to do when you plug in your brand new iron is to tin it with some solder. And this won't really be possible with this one because it's pretty uh, pretty well pooched. But I will just touch it, melt a little bit, and just kind of put a coating of solder on the tip. And you want to do that before you um, use it for the first time and also before you store it away. And that will kind of act as a buffer against humidity and the oxygen in the air. It'll just keep it... Um, protect it a little bit so your tip will last you a lot longer. Um, so what else I have? I don't have a proper stand either. My uh, soldering iron sitting in a coffee mug. I'm going to buy a new soldering iron and a soldering stand. stand. I'm going to take care of it, but for right now, this is what i got to work with. Um, so we got solder here. This is lead-free solder. Very easy to come by. It comes in a pound spool. You can get it at the uh, hardware store or a stained glass shop. It's about $12. Um, you need some flux, and I have flux paste, but they also have flux that's liquid. And this basically cleans your surface to be soldered and makes the solder stick. So flux is very important. Um, and also, since I'm going to be doing some beach glass pendants here, I'm going to um, explain how to do those. You also need some copper foil tape. And I'm just going to show you the package that this comes in. I'm using Master Foil Plus. I picked it up at the stained glass shop. It's a quarter inch wide and it was $4.66 a roll and it does come in different widths. Um, but I find the quarter inch to be very useful for jewelry making. So let's zoom into the table and I'm going to show you uh, how to go about soldering something. 
All right, one of the things you're really going to find useful is these um, third hand tools, or they can also be called helping hands. Um, basically, what you have is a magnifier, which I haven't really had to use very much, but I could see how it would be handy, pardon the pun. And then you've got these um, <clears throat> alligator clips that are on kind of hinges, so you can move it around however you want. You can tighten them up if they get loose with these little wing nuts. And um, the base is weighted so it stays put on your table. And I would really um, caution you against trying to solder without something like this or a clamp or something that you can hold your piece with. Also, your piece will get very hot when you're soldering, so, um, so you really want to have that. Now, I'm going to show you why flux is important. Here's a piece of beach glass that I picked up last summer, and I have wrapped it with the copper tape that I just showed you. And look at, if I try to solder this, you're going to see, and I'm going to hold this with my hands because it's not going to get that hot because the solder's not really going to stick very well. I have not flexed this. So I'm going to grab myself a little solder. And if you, this is not how you would solder for electronics. Let me just tell you, if you're looking for a way to um, do electronic soldering, this is not it. So here I am just melting the solder. And look at it. It doesn't really want to stick. Look at that. It's very rough. Is that in focus? It's very rough. It's skipping. It's just not acceptable. It's not pretty. So what you want to do is flux it. So what I have here is this little um, can of flux, and I'm just using a Q-tip. I'm going to go over this. You can clean this off the glass after. It's, it's very much like Vaseline. You can clean this off after with a little alcohol, a little um, denatured or rubbing alcohol or window cleaner, anything like that. I think you could probably use vinegar too, and then it might patina your, your solder, which might be the look you're going for. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more solder here, and I'm just going to tin these edges, and you'll see how much better that goes. Look at that! See how much better that goes on just by adding the flux? Now at this point, I really wouldn't want to hold this because it's going to get hot. Oh, my first tip for soldering is wear pants. So many times I've been soldering and I've dropped what I'm working on because it got hot and I forgot to put it in the clamp on my legs and thank goodness I had pants on because that would have hurt like a mother. All right, so you flux in your solder and then you get a really nice silver joint. I also recommend that you do all your taping ahead of time because once you've been playing with this flux paste, your fingers are going to get very oily and then your tape's not going to want to stick. But I'm going to see if I can just kind of wipe my hands off and show you how to put the copper on the edge of a piece of sea glass or microscope slide. Um, it's going to be a little easier on a microscope slide because the um, the edges are flat. And I've got to this box of microscope slides. You can order them from various places. It's probably cheaper to get them at a medical supply place, but I got this box of 24 at Oriental Trading for a couple dollars. They're not expensive. And then I just have some little pieces of pattern paper that I've cut out. Let's see, am I in frame? Let me move this out of the way. And um, I am just going to put some little pre-cut things here. Oh, I've got this lovely little Doctor Who. <laughs> little Doctor Who slide thing, and I'm just going to put this Doctor Who stuff on the back. Oh, I'm such a nerd. That's all right. What if you, You've come to expect that by now, I think. And I'm just going to sandwich it in between two pieces of the, so the microscope slide. Not that this really has anything to do with soldering, except I'm just showing you how I prepare a little uh, microscope slide. Oh, here's my other slide, which I've got flux on the outside. And then I'm going to wrap it with my foil tape. And yeah, you can see that if I go like that. I just kind of like eyeball it to keep it fairly centered on the copper tape as I go around. Some people might do this in like strips, and that's fine if that's if you feel more comfortable cutting four pieces of the tape and going that way. You can do it that way. I think this is a little easier. And once you've got it covered in solder, you you know, it, it looks fine. Are we in frame? We're in frame. Boy, we're cooking with fire today. And you just want to overlap it slightly so the uh, so it doesn't come apart at that join. And then just snip it off with a pair of scissors, which I actually have within reach, which is quite a nice change. And then you just want to burnish it all down. You can use a bone folder for this if you want to. Or just use your fingers. You just want to try to get out any wrinkles. Um, because the wrinkles may show up even when you solder over them. These are kind of fun. You can make uh, Christmas ornaments. 
Woo! You can uh, make jewelry. These are going to be pendants. Because, hey, who wouldn't want a Doctor Who pendant? I don't know anybody. We'll see. He'll probably have a big clearance sale on these <laughs> the next January. <laughs> they don't sell at the next craft fair. Um, all right, so that's how you prepare a microscope slide. Uh, for sea glass, it's the same thing. Just your edges are going to be a little bit... Um, well, they're, I would say they're a little more tricky, but they're just not even. So you're going to be pushing it in around the bumps and um, corners. So just kind of try to center your piece of sea glass on there and just wrap it around. I would do, again, all these at once before you start dealing with flux so you don't end up um, getting it all greasy. Because once if you have flux on this, the tape, the adhesive on the tape is not going to stick. So it's very important to get all your taping done first and then do your flexing. And if you end up with like, oh, I, on the microscope slide, you'll see. If you end up with like, um, I'll just show you that. That's all Ooh, in front of the camera. There we go. Um, but a little spot somewhere where it didn't line up, I think. Actually, this isn't too bad. Is this the one I just did? Oh, right here. Um, so I got a little spot here where the end of the tape kind of overlaps a little bit on the edge. So I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife. I'm going to set it down so I don't cut myself. And I'm just going to um, just slice that. Or if you, ha you have the, like too much tape that you're covering up, something you don't want to, you can just kind of go over and, and uh, trim it down a little bit before you, before you flux it and solder it. All right, so to flux, you simply take your Q-tip and you dip it in your flux paste. And you want to cover all the metal that you want to, um, to have solder attached to. If you don't, you're gonna, the solder's going to skip. And you're going to be able to see that copper tape. And the, the copper tape is pretty and all, but once you have a soldered area, you really want it to be uniform. Now, I could, I could hold this with a, um, with a, like a binder clip, kind of like this if I want. If I find it a little bit easier to um, to handle this way. I'll show you that. You really want your surface to be, um, you know what, I don't think this is better, but you can do that if you don't have one of these helping hands. Um, you want to work on the horizontal surface. I'm tangled up in a roll of tape here. Oh my goodness, what's new? All right, so it's easiest to work on a horizontal surface. So here I've got a horizontal surface. I'm going to pick up a little bit of solder. This is not how you solder if you're doing electrical components. I'm just telling you that right now. And I am just going to tin the edges. And see how nice and smooth that goes. Then I'm going to tip this over and get this horizontal edge. The key really is not to use too much solder because then it gets really globby and does not look very professional. I might be able to tip it over enough to... These helping hands are really great. They're not very expensive. I got this at Martin's for my favorite store for um, $5. They have them in the Fire Mountain Gems catalog for about that same price. So they're really an inexpensive um, item. Now to do the fronts, let me just do that last side with a little clamp here. Oh, also be careful when you put these in the clamp that you don't kind of pull or twist on it or you're going to disturb that tape and then you're going to have a bump there and it's not going to look very good or be as strong as it would have otherwise. There we go. We're just going to tin that. Okay. So it just you just want to really go for a smooth, um, even coverage. That's not too hot. I can remove it. And I'm just going to set this flat on my mat. Now I could probably do the whole thing right there in the clamp but I just want to make sure I'm kind of showing you the best way to do it. Also, heating up the tape can help a little bit with your solder spreading. Whoops, I'm going to clean the tip on this damp sponge I have here. I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to wipe off any debris. And see how it gets a little shiny there? That means the solder is going to stick again. So then I can melt a little. When your solder's not melting anymore, go ahead and clean it on a damp sponge. And you want to use like a, um, either get a soldering kit, a soldering stand that has the sponge with it, or just use a cellulose sponge, not like the, um, the plasticky sponges. Hope you can see that with a cord going through. I'm basically just putting the thin layer. This video is probably going to be kind of long. I do apologize, but I just want to 
kind of wrap up what I've learned over this week of solder experimentation and hopefully help you have an easier time at soldering. I'm just going to flip it over. I can uh, smooth out some of those bumps later. I'm doing it. It's, it's going pretty smoothly, but sometimes you get a bump and then uh, you can smooth those out later when it's in the clamp. Watch your fingers. It does get hot. There we go. If you find yourself coming upon a little bump that's dripped over the edge, it doesn't happen too much unless you use a little too much solder. Um, just kind of just hold it over for a second till it melts and you can kind of, um, it'll kind of flow out or you can push it out if you have to. Really, you don't want to be pushing the solder. It should just kind of flow, but if you're dealing with a really oxidized um, tip like I have here, it happens. So, you know, I'm just I'm working with what I have. Now, I want to put a jump ring at the end. Oh, and I can go around if I want right now and just kind of smooth out some bumps. Just be careful not to drip solder on yourself, for goodness sake. I dripped a little on myself yesterday, and it hurt. I had a little, I had a little blister on my finger from it. Another thing you might use the, the, the uh, soldering gun for is melting out... Um, unfortunate bits of solder from a project or desoldering. So I'm really gonna get this tape out of the way because it's gonna drive me bananas. All right, so we're in frame, excellent. Um, I'm going to put a jump ring right here so I can hang my lovely pendant. And I'm just gonna clamp that in and carefully so I don't disrupt the tape, I'm just gonna turn it so I can get these two Alligator clips kind of facing each other. Easier said than none, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> ah. All right. So try not to twist the um, try to twist the clamp, not the pendant, because you don't want to tear up your uh, your foil tape. All right. So now I've got the um, the clamp that's gonna hold my jump ring and my uh, pendant lined up and I'm going to take a little jump ring and I think this is either surgical steel or nickel. Uh, aluminum will not work but you'll, you'll see when you um, go to solder something whether it's going to solder or not. If solder doesn't stick to it then it's obviously a metal that, like aluminum that will not solder properly. All right and this really would be quite impossible to do without a um, without one of these third hand devices. So I'm just lining it up the, where I want it. Now I do need to add flux. So I'm going in my Q-tip and my flux paste. And I'm going to put some flux on this. I'm trying not to get it on the clamp because I have soldered things to my clamp before because I fluxed them by accident. But the wonderful thing about soldering is that um, it's really only going to stick to what's fluxed. So as long as you don't flux your uh, little clips here, you're going to be in good shape. hope my pigtails aren't in the way. And I just try to get it on as straight as I can. So take a little time at this at this point to make sure you've got it exactly lined up the way you want. All right. So now I've got my iron. And I really want to make sure I can work on the tip. So I'm going to clean it and see what I have for a workable area. Okay, I do have some workable area right there at the tip. So I'm going to melt it. And you don't want too much. If you get too much solder, um, it's going to be an unattractive big blob. So you just really want to like a little bit of a valley. Okay, that looks pretty good actually. Hopefully I haven't soldered it to the clamp. <laughs> All right, let it cool down for a second. Then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna double check that I don't have it soldered to the clamp. And I can do that by opening the clamp and look at that, it is stuck. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna wipe off my soldering iron and try to melt the solder off the clamp. See, you know, these are the type of things you're really going to run into <laughs> when you do it yourself. So, you know, you can learn from my mistakes and hopefully not make them yourself. Yeah, that, that probably still stuck, stuck there. I probably should have clamped the uh, jump ring a little bit further away. All right. 
And I'm going to try to smooth out this little valley of solder so that I can keep my jump ring attached. All right, there we go. That's attached. That's good. So let me show you this here. Um, and what we have, I just hope the camera will focus it on that. Maybe if I put my hand behind it. Um, what we have is just a little bit of a hill of solder on each side of the jump ring. That's a nice strong connection. And um, I will just clean this with glass cleaner and I'll have a lovely pendant to add to a necklace. So easy peasy. It's, it's not that hard if you know what to do and it did take some trial and error. And you will have to practice, I will tell you that. So here is a piece of stained glass that's been wrapped. And again... Um, I'm going to, I think I'll grab it in the clip here. I wouldn't really need a clip this big, but that's what I have, so that's what I'll use. I've got to flex it. If you hold it in the clip, it'll keep you from getting it all over your fingers. You just need to remember to flex that other side when you, um, after you solder this part, after you tin this side. And usually don't need to wipe the, uh, the tip every time, but where I have such a, uh, such a um, oxidized old soldering iron. I'm going to just so I can see where I'm actually going to be able to melt my solder. It's really it's nice when you when you um, you know get a nice solder bead of solder and it just kind of flows and covers your project properly. It's such a nice feeling. I was always wondering, I used to work at Radio Shack and I did um, some electrical soldering when people would come in with a uh, cordless telephone they needed a new battery for, we'd solder in the batteries for them, and it always seemed to work so easily, but what, I, what didn't occur to me was that I wasn't the one maintaining that soldering kit. Somebody else that worked there was, you know, making sure it was kept up and running nice. That was very hot, I shouldn't have done that. Um, so there, there was that big mystery solved. I just thought I was buying crappy guns, which yes, I am buying crappy guns, but that wasn't really the reason why it was, um, it was a problem. I'm looking for my pliers. I don't really want these pliers. I want my bent nose pliers. There we go. So you end up, like, just like with glass beads, you end up passing things from hand to hand if you're not working in the clamp a lot. But I do find that when it comes to put the jump rings on or attach two pieces together, you need to have the third hand or at least a clamp that you can attach it to. Um, so ho I'm hoping that these um, tips will help you. If you go out and you buy a soldering gun or if you raid your husband's toolbox for one, you'll at least know how to use it properly so that you won't um, ruin it or melt chunks out of it or whatnot. You know, don't leave it plugged in when you're not using it, thinking that you're going like, to they heat up so fast you don't really need to, um, to leave them plugged in like a curling iron, you know. They're going to heat up. They're going to be ready for you by the time you're done taping your first thing. All right, I'm going to put a jump ring on this. It's the same procedure. In fact, if you've, you know, you could probably even stop watching if you've, if you've had enough. Let's see, just, I think I want the jump ring on the tip of this one. This time when I put my jump ring on, though, I'm not going to, I'm not going to clamp it so far in that I have to, that I, that I end up flexing the um, clamp when I do it. Also, a thing, too, um, that I want to mention, when I'm putting these jump rings on, um, I am trying to fuse the area that where the jump ring is cut. So I'm I am uh, soldering the the cut side down. So there's no way that the um, like a string or any, or anything is going to come out of the uh, that weak spot. So I'm soldering down the split in the jump ring. I just wanted to mention that because um, it will look a lot nicer and it will also give you a much stronger piece of jewelry. And you know I think I'm actually going to try to zoom in a little bit closer. Excuse the shaky camera. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in really close on that so you can have a nice, a nice, um, shot of that. And hopefully I won't get my big head in the way. All right, there we go. That hopefully will come right into nice sharp focus. And I'm going to kind of look at the camera as I do it and hopefully, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I hope that's a focus enough for you to see, but at least with it being um, close up. Let me flex that. I don't, I can't remember if I flexed it or not. Now that I, now that I've been gabbing here. Okay. Hopefully I will not. I will not attach that to the clamp this time. So I'm picking up. Ah! Oh, that was a 
thing of jump rings. So I'm just going to show you this up close to the camera too. I'm just picking up a little solder. Which is how you do not do it if you're electrical soldering. I just want to just throw that out there again. And I'm hoping you can see that. I'm just melting it on so that it covers the tip. I think I got it. I think it's in there. I'm just trying not to get my head in the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I can see that that's connected well. Just give it a second to cool enough that you can take the clamp off. So there you have it, Soldering 101 with Lindsay. There's my bracelet that I that I made. Can I get that in front of the camera? Boy, I'm awful at uh, framing things today. Um, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.